Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss taking a seasonal approach to your menswear wardrobe and the Italian philosophy of scorpacciata. <laughs> that Italy has had on classic menswear is obvious. From things like the soft shoulders of summer sport coats to the Milanese buttonhole on high-end suits. This is also evident in the various vocabulary terms used by menswear enthusiasts such as sprezzatura for the nonchalant style of dressing favored by Italian men, as well as spezzato, which is the advanced style technique of pairing elements of two different suits together. In today's video, then, we'll add a third of these Italian S-words to our menswear vocabulary, scorpacciata. So, what is scorpacciata, then? Well, it typically refers to a sort of seasonal indulgence. In particular, the celebration of food that happens to be in season at any given time. As an example, in Italy, chestnuts are harvested in late October. And around this time, many villages and towns will have a festival, or sagra, to celebrate it. The chestnuts are often served roasted in paper cones, or ground into flour and turned into cake, studded with pine nuts or crepes filled with sweet ricotta cheese. Everyone will indulge in this great seasonal bounty, and then, with the season, it ends. The same goes for things like olives, grapes, asparagus, or strawberries. They can be bought out of season in supermarkets, of course, but people will try to avoid this, and there isn't really the same sense of indulging in the food and digging in with gusto as there is when things are in peak season. But of course, with a few exceptions, we're not really a food channel. So, how does this concept specifically relate to clothing? Essentially, scorpacciata in menswear means really savoring different types of clothes that are especially appropriate for a given season. Now, for those who are new to menswear or who don't really care much about style, the ideal garment is probably going to be the all-season suit. Suits like these are typically made of a mid-weight worsted wool and can be purchased and then worn all year long indiscriminately. And for the especially casual, a pair of something like denim jeans might fall into the same category. You can wear them year-round and they're versatile enough to pair with almost any casual outfit, so you don't have to think about introducing a lot of variety. However, anyone who is seasonally inclined will relish the chance to wear different things in the winter, spring, summer, and fall seasons. When the weather starts getting cool, a menswear aficionado might look forward to wearing flannels and tweed sport coats with cashmere ties in the same way that a foodie looks forward to white truffle season. And conversely, when the weather warms up, he then gets excited about the opportunity to wear linen, loafers, and Panama hats again. This is reflected in his wardrobe, as he'll have collections of clothes for the warm season and the cold season, as well as a number of transitional pieces that can be worn equally well when things are in between. In the broad strokes, then, there are two main appeals to the concept of scorpacciata within menswear. The first of these is that it's temporary. Because each season has a start and an end, you find the limited time in which you can wear certain garments well to be more precious, and thus you can relish wearing certain garments for a few months at a time and then put them away until next year. On the opposite side of this coin, though, the second big appeal to the concept is that even though things are temporary, they're in a rigid cycle. So, even though you have to appreciate wearing certain garments in a given season, when you put them away, you can look forward to that same season next year as well and get a same sense of renewed pleasure year after year and season after season. That's a bit of an overview on what the concept of seasonality is in the world of classic menswear. So, what isn't it, then? We should point out here that dressing for the season doesn't mean following fashions in this context. 
Oftentimes, when we hear the phrase dressing for the season, we think of the latest fashions that might have come down runways, but this is really something more within the realm of cutting edge or high fashion, which is somewhat opposite to the more classically based world of menswear. So you can still follow the philosophy of scorpacciata without following what's in in any given year. The key is remembering that you're dressing for any summer or any winter, and not being dictated by fashion houses trying to sell you the latest trends. With what seasonality is and isn't out of the way then, let's now cover what seasonality looks like at different times throughout the year. First, we'll cover warm weather. Dressing for the spring and summer months means a focus on staying cool and having maximum air circulation with your outfits. This would involve things like changing the fabrics you're going to wear to high twist or tropical wools, frescoes, and linens for pants and for jackets. Warm weather typically calls for brighter colors too, so you might put more of an emphasis on wearing white, like white pants or a white dinner jacket for example, or go for things like brighter blues and put away your dark navies. It also means being more casual. This is the time to abandon neckwear and open up your shirt collar. Instead of wearing a full suit, you could wear a combination of sport coat or blazer with odd trousers, and instead of a conventional button-up, you could opt for a polo shirt. Moving on to cold weather dressing, your priorities are just the opposite, staying warm and often staying dry in the autumn and winter months. Seasonality here is perhaps a little bit more obvious, and everybody is probably going to do it. Things like putting on boots or an overcoat or gloves when it's cold out. However, there are also more subtle changes to incorporate into your wardrobe here that the connoisseur of scorpacciata will appreciate. The colder seasons are your time to master the art of layering with things like sweaters and vests. And of course, winter is great for textures as well. Anything that looks particularly woolly is fair game. There's no need to rely on the standard all-season printed silk tie or Super 110's worsted wool suit. You could try a flannel suit or a tweed jacket and a cashmere tie instead. And for the true expert, there are also degrees of difference within a particular season. For example, in late May, you might wear a navy blue wool and linen blend sport coat, but on a hot sunny day in August, this would seem dark and uncomfortable, so you might opt for a cream linen sport coat instead. In May, you could wear a jacket with a lining, but in the dog days of August, you're probably going to want to go for an unlined jacket that has an open weave. You could wear a knitted vest under a suit in December, but in February, you could go for a cardigan sweater with sleeves. The true beauty of scorpacciata, then, is not only do you get differences between seasons, but also within seasons. So we hope that alongside sprezzatura and spezzato, we've added scorpacciata to your menswear lexicon. Ultimately, just like dressing for any given occasion, dressing for the season is about looking correct in your surroundings. So even though the old fashioned rule of not wearing white after Labor Day doesn't have to be observed anymore, wearing white linen in the winter, or for that matter, wearing a charcoal three-piece suit in August, is ultimately something akin to eating watermelon in January. You can do it, but if you adopt a bit more patience, you can savor the given seasonality of things just a bit more. So, whenever someone happens to compliment your flannels in the winter or linen in the summer, remember to spread the word and tell them all about the joys of scorpacciata. In today's video, I've attempted to introduce a bit of this specific seasonality into my outfit. This is most readily apparent in my summer sport coat, which is in a tan color and in linen in a herringbone weave. Most of the other elements in my outfit are incorporating something of a warm color feel. We can start here with my pastel pink shirt, which has a bit of warmth, but also a light and breezy color that's appropriate for summer when we are filming this video. 
My trousers are plain brown, but they do have a bit of a red undertone, and my shoes from Ace Marks, which are hole-cut Oxfords, have a bit of an oxblood color with a hand-painted patina. As you can see, I've gone tieless today to be comfortable in the warmer weather, and the remaining elements of my outfit are all from Fort Belvedere. We can start here with my pocket square, which is also in linen. It's in a particularly open weave and features burgundy and white threads, and also has a hand-rolled white X stitch. My cornflower boutonniere is in magenta and white for a slightly bolder pop of color that I wanted to incorporate because I'm not wearing a tie, and I did want a bolder element of interest up toward my face. My cufflinks are platinum-plated sterling silver in an eagle claw design, featuring red carnelian as the stone to harmonize with many of the other reddish elements throughout the outfit. My shadow-striped socks are in gray and burgundy red, and my belt is part of our new Fort Belvedere belt system. The belt itself is in Bordeaux burgundy calf leather, and the buckle is the model we're calling the Jasper, which has a rounded shape. It's in a silver color to harmonize with the metal in my cufflinks. Of course, you can find all of these accessories, including the pocket square, boutonniere, belt and buckle, socks, and cufflinks in the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs>